Okay, so hello and welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Linda here at the Upper Saddle River Library and thank you for coming to Gardening with Bulbs. I, I like to thank Vipka from the Master Garden of Bergen County for being our speaker today. Um, as I was saying before, I did mute everybody uh, except for us. Uh, when it comes time to questions and answers at the end, you can unmute yourself or you're also, if you'll see on the bottom, there is a chat. You can chat me throughout. I will look at the chats and this will, this recording will be, we will post it to the uh, Upper Saddle River Library's YouTube page. And um, tomorrow I will send, I think it'll go up tomorrow. Tomorrow I will send out an email with every, to everybody that's attending with the link to today's presentation. So uh, without further ado, we will let our master gardener take away gardening with bulbs. Okay, let's try. Uh -huh. Okay. Oops. Don't leave. Okay. So can you see the the, the first page now with gardening. No, you're going to have to hit the share screen on the bottom. Oh, oh yes. Mm -hmm. oh, where is it now? When you pull down the bar, you see the share screen? Oh, there we go. We're starting to show this. Good. Perfect. We see your slideshow and it looks wonderful. Okay. Perfect. So, thank you, Linda. Thank you, the library, for having me here. And, and thank all of you who came tonight. And I invite you to join me uh, for a tour through my garden to see a whole year's abundance of flowers from bulbs. Yes, uh, that's right. 10 months of colorful flowers from bulbs. And um, what we call bulbs is only one part of a whole group of plants that are called geophytes. And that comes from geo, the earth, and phytes, um, uh, plants from from Greek and so you see that they look all different this is the what we call a bulb and this is, is a similar one for lilies and this is one for crocus that is a, called a corm and you don't have to remember that but this is from from uh, uh, irises this uh, funny looking thing and dahlias look like this, and there's a stem tuber, like the potato, they had all these eyes from which the, the plants grow, and then there are some that just make thick, fat roots. And why do they do that? This is one of the biggest bulbs that I have ever seen, and this was the smallest. I think the real size is, as you see it, this is about half it, half it. It is not really as big as this. Oh, that, that's the photo. Um, the big ones and small ones, and they all have the same, uh, like like this onion. They have this uh, thick wall of of um, containing nutrients and moisture, and the uh, small embryonic plant in here. That's something very beautiful and as soon as the weather is is getting warm enough for, for the bulb, it starts growing. It doesn't have to wait for anything. It grows on its own from the nutrition and the energy that it start, uh, it's uh, stored last year. So this is a new year beginning with the, with the energy stored over the winter in this year. And the, the very earliest are the snowdrops. They come with their little spears through the snow or leaf litter 
end in, in February. Very lovely. And, and they multiply freely. And I tell you later how they do that. And uh, winter aconite come as little balls with this color. And when the sun is out, it looks like this. And also they spread. They spread and, and if, they, if the, the soil is right and the conditions are right, then they uh, spread really nicely. This is something called uh, uh, leucogium. And uh, it's, I don't talk about every pic uh, picture. I would just want to whet your appetite and, and I go into the details later. Um, th th there are irises that grow not from, from, uh, from rhizomes or bulbs, but from, uh, from root, uh, 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 thick root. They bloom very early and very low uh, together with the crocus iris. Reticulata. Yeah. <clears throat> most of the most of the uh, uh, geophytes are from all over the world, but the liverwort is, is I think one one of uh, of the native wildflowers. There are not too many, and um, it, it it has. Uh, leathery green roots and it blooms about in March in, in uh, woody areas. Uh, this is Chironodoxa, glory of the snow. And it looks really up at you with this white, white, starry eyes. I love that. Scylla. So now I can talk about the, how they spread. All these little, the early bulbs, they are the minor, called the minor bulbs. They have, they are, uh, um, they have a little, little, uh, what is this called? Uh, uh, skin around that is very sugary and the ants, they love that. So they collect that and carry it to their, to their den and they throw out the seed, but they eat the sugary part. And so the, the ants are those who distribute the snowdrops, the, win the winter aconite, the crocus. And so if you have a, a, a garden that is offering the right soil and conditions, they will spread over the years. This is a crocus. This is another native American. It's called bloodroot. And uh, it has this beautiful, the whitest white, what I can think of. And they have the, the, the leaves before they really uh, open, the leaves are like a coat along, uh, around the stems. They protect the stem. Uh, you can see that here a little and here. And, and later the leaves, when the flowers are gone, the leaves really develop and get bigger. And, mm. I have to go back um, to, to Crocus again. There is one crocus that um, the squirrels and, uh, and other animals don't like, and that is a crocus, Thomasianus, Thomasianus crocus. And um, that is rodent uh, resistant. This is, this is not one, this is the blue one that I showed before. Oh, and this is another American, wildflower, the shooting star. Beautiful, you will find that not often in gardens, but in, 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 in um, 
in really uh, secluded woody areas. You can still find it, but you can buy it, and if you give it a good home, it will it will thrive. So this is a kind of situation that the, the most of the bulbs, the early bulbs especially, like uh, tall trees that are in spring without uh, leaves and they let the light, the sunlight in and, and uh, they don't take all the moisture away, not yet. So, and, and this is, you see here, uh, uh, all kinds of tulips and and the very early are already gone and in the back is the uh, Phosisia. <clears throat> so and that's that's what the, the bulbs want. When they go dormant during the summer, and almost all of them go dormant, then they are protected through the leaves of the big trees. Their shade protects them from getting burned. But they like it pretty dry, not too moist. And that's what they get under the trees and shrubs also. If this happens, that all of a sudden there's an, uh, a late snow and at the beginning of April, don't panic. These plants have a, a um, what do you call it, a um, uh, antifreeze in, in their veins. So if it is lasts only one, two, three days, and mostly it will in April, then they, they are not harmed by the snow, no panic. Uh, all the kinds of tulips that I once had, and this is not from last year, the, the, the pictures are from my garden, but they are from, from many years. And, um, as you all probably have experienced, the deer love to tulips and they eat the, almost all of them. I don't know what to do. You, you don't want to see tulips in cages. I don't know. One thing you can do is plant, interplant tulips with your peonies. They protect, they protect the, the not yet opened peonies protect the tulips and it's a kind of barrier and uh, and, the, and and slowly the the, the uh, peonies grow and and they cover the, the tulips and cover also afterwards when when the leaves don't look so nice anymore then the peonies are fully open and and uh, uh, they, have, they have their show. So that's a nice idea. You can do this with tulips and also with daffodils. And, and um, that's a nice thing to do. Yeah, then we have the daffodils and everybody knows them. I don't have to show too many of those. And um, there are these very small ones they call Ted a Ted. They are a little earlier, and you see also here are the upcoming peonies. They will later protect the daffodils. And this is a fritillaria that is almost three or four feet high. It's the, the queen of them all, and it, uh, the huge the huge bulb I showed you in the beginning, that is from Fritillaria. It is huge and it stinks like... Mm. So when I, when I bought this, I put it uh, at the, tr at the uh, counter of, of the um, Home Depot and then the woman on, on the ch uh, checkout, she's... Mm -hmm. mm. What is this? Another, oh, it's me? What, what is it? I don't know. And then we found out that it is the bulb, the big bulb that is stinky. And that's why the, the, the animals don't dig it up. And um, if, if you want to save these, they are, they are hardy, but if you want to have them for many years, 
you have to dig them up every now and then every two or three years and put them deeper again because um, they they build a new bulb on top of the other and then they're too too low to the to the soil surface and they don't bloom anymore this is fritillaria hyacinths and all kinds of colors and with that beautiful fragrance and I have not had any deer eat them, but I know from friends who have them, they said the deer ate them all. So maybe, maybe a little chicken wire or something. I don't know. That's what I do sometimes, but it, it, it's, it's uh, sad. This is muscari, and muscari has, um, Beside his beautiful color and and cheerful little uh, little spikes, you they they have leaves, a second set of leaves in fall. So when wherever you plant bulbs, if you put a few of these uh, together with it close by, so in fall if you uh, next fall if you plant new. New, new bulbs, about more or something, then you know, oh, here are the leaves from the muscari, so here already are some, some bulbs, like tulips or, or uh, daffodils. So as they, they are an indicator for um, don't dig here. They have these small uh, lancet leaves, um, um, exactly like in spring. This is Camassia. Camassia is well, not very well known and it, it doesn't uh, uh, put up a too great a show, but the single flower stem is so beautiful. And they come in this uh, purplish uh, and, and white. And if you have many of them and they multiply and they, and they uh, multiply and spread so uh, then you have them once you have buy them you have them as a backdrop for other things it's a not very nice these are the irises the siberian isis iris and a few bearded iris in the back and um, there is again the difference between um, these bearded irises, this is are the bearded irises, and they have these big, uh, uh, what is it now? Or whatever, big uh, root system that you have to dig up every four years and cut in, in healthy smaller pieces and, and uh, plant them again and give the other, the rest away don't plant them too closely, about 23, 25 inches between the single, single plant and, and um, not too deep so that there's almost uh, no soil on top and, let the, and they are put horizontally and only a very thin layer of, of of soil and they don't like uh, neighbors they don't like other things grow in between and that's the hardest thing to keep the soil around uh, free from from weeds if you don't do that then you have you have two or three years or, uh, or maybe four but then they stop blooming and then you is the time after they bloomed in july you or july september you can dig them up and replant right away. These are different kinds of, this is my, one of my favorites. This and this, this is allium. And allium is now the, uh, the bulb plant. 
and they they come with these huge round round flower heads and in in, in all heights and all sizes and um, and they come back again and again and nobody eats them and nobody nobody um, um, disturbs them that's the really nice nice thing this is this is called um, I think Mount Everest so this is this is a piece of my perennial bed where these um, alliums look through and hear the irises and so they 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 are good and very dense plantings the alliums here are more you can, you can see them so they they um, they take the peonies peonies have uh, very fleshy roots very thick, like as thick as a thumb, and and they 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 don't want to be disturbed. If once you plant them, let them sit there for years, and they get bigger and bigger. And this is called a bowl of beauty. And daylilies, yes, daylilies. Uh, it's you think as American as apple pie, but they are from South Af South Africa. Wait a minute. Hmm. Not so good. Um. Hmm. Hmm. At least they are not from here. And, but there's, they are so much uh, cultivated and, and, and tempered with. I, I show only this one, I like this. And all kinds of lilies, and also they are the target of deer. They, they come in and in one night they eat all the buds. I don't know what I can tell you about that, but I, I, I tell you a little bit after afterwards. Um, there's a spray that you can uh, spray every thirty days, once a month, and, they, and and it's nothing poisonous. It's something that the deer don't like to smell, and they they leave it alone, and that's what I use. I t I tell you at the end. Uh, um, that again. Mm. Cocosmia, yeah. Cocosmia is in the iris family. It is also, uh, it spreads and it has these, these iris leaves and its architectural structure in uh, that they grow really very decorative and uh, they're nice. Uh, Cut flowers. Think about is uh, uh, when you when you buy uh, bulbs, they are very very uh, nice. And this is a colchicum, and um, it's also called a, a fall autumn crocus, but it's not a crocus. It's it's a family in its own, and and. Um, the, the, uh, the, a special problem with them is that in spring there comes a big green uh, plant, big green leaves, and you don't know what is this. You think it's a it's a it's a weed, or I, did I plant this? I don't know what it is. And if you have patience and wait, what it is, the, the leaves go go away. And in, in fall, the, the flowers open without any leaves, only these crocus-like flowers. And, and the, the insects love it, as you can see, and they have this beautiful color. 
And this is the real uh, autumn crocus. That is a crocus, and the, the, it is a crocus sativa, and it has these red threads, and that is saffron. Saffron is harvested from autumn crocus. That's a, that's a beauty. It's a beauty. Now we come to the uh, planting instructions. The, the rule of thumb is that you plant every bulb three times as deep as his thickness. So the small ones are pretty, pretty uh, low and the, as big, uh, the, the bigger they get, the deeper you plant them. And loosen the soil and you can put some, some um, fertilizer uh, on, in, in the loose soil but not indirectly to the bulbs. You put them uh, on, on, the, uh, on the ground and mix it, milk the soil, and then you put the, the, the bulbs in and, and put the soil on top. And you can also fertilize them on, on top and, and, and water them in, and that's it. And then wait for the first spring and wait. So now we are here already in September, October. These are kanas, and kana is, um, is a tropical plant, as, as is dahlia and, and, and many others. So um, you can't leave them in the soil. If you want to have this show, you have to dig them up in, in fall, cut after the first frost, you cut them um, a few inches above the soil, you cut them and, and throw the, uh, uh, the leaves and stem to the compost. And then uh, a few years later, you dig it up and that's a big clump and you can put it in a, in a, in a bag, with a plastic bag with some newspaper and put it in a, in a cool, basement. And in, in spring, April, you get, get them out and, and cut whatever is healthy and nice, cut with a, sh a, sh a sharp knife, the, the bad part, and, and when if it's too many, too dense, you, do, you, you divide them in two or three and give it away to friends or have a bigger flower bed and um, and then they slowly come. Uh, it is um, maybe in June, July, they start coming up and they start blooming in July. And they bloom also. They're still blooming outside. And that's, they are high. They are higher than me and, um, we love them and the light. How the light plays and the le in the leaves and the shade and the, that is that is uh, a joy. And dahlias, same with dahlias. They are from South America, and they have to be dug up in our area in in, in, in six and. Also, after the first frost, when they start getting mushy and you cut them up about five inches, four, three inches from the ground, throw everything out, and then you dig them up after a few days. And, oh, this is also one of the dahlias. I, I continue with the story. That's how I do it. I cut them, I take them out and I dry them in the sun on, on a nice, nice October day or beginning of November and put them in, in these pig moss. And these, they are labeled, the, the, the yellow one and the red one and so on. 
and um, peat moss and put them in the in the basement. And everything that is old and, and, and mushy or is, is, is empty, is hollow, that you cut with a sharp knife. And it's important ex by, uh, at, at, uh, with the dahlias that you leave that every, this is, these are dahlias, every piece that you cut has to have a little bit from the stem, the stem that was above ground. And um, you have this here, and you have it here, and a sharp knife, and, and then you can pack it. Um, and this might look, it might be the old one from last year, so maybe uh, that that is the one that I threw out, and this is a young one that I keep for next year. Okay. So, and these are the dahlias. They make the end. The dahlias, and 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 they make the end of the season. They bloom into November first uh, frost that kills them. So we have about um, when it's mild. It's even it's even at beginning of December sometimes, and um, that is the end from from February to November. There's something in bloom. Okay. I actually got your the slide. You're now the end of the slideshow. Mm -hmm. Okay, there were a couple questions in the chat. I think yeah. is that okay? If I, we get I, I stop. I stop sharing now, right? Yes, that would be yeah. wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Let Perfect. me let me say a few a few words. Yeah. So we keep we keep the images of uh, of the plants. In, in our memories and in our computers, of course. And they help us through the darker days of winter until one day there is the first little snowdrop again. So there's, there is the, the circle begins again and, and the cycle of joy, garden joy. <laughs> Okay, so questions that I did see in the chat, if it's okay, I'll start with that. Yep, yep. Should I plant my daffodils now? And I think that's probably is a, a, a big question of it. when is a good time to actually be planting these bulbs this fall? You can all the, you can all the bulbs, uh, as, except for those who are not very hardy. Yeah, this is the dahlia and of course, they are planted in spring. All the others, you, excuse me, you can plant until the first frost. Into November, it's, an, it's not too late, into November. But it's not too early either, right? It doesn't matter if we do it now, do we have no, to wait? No, September is some, some, sometimes a little early, but because it cannot uh, still become very warm. But now it is, it's okay, you can start now and, and it can, it can wait until mid-November. Mid Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And then another question is, how much of your garden are you forced to replace each year due to the deer? Yeah, the, the deer it's problem. Like you were saying that you had a spray that you, you liked. Yeah. yeah, there is, for, for I think uh, three years now, I do spraying and that is a can, a can of um, deer stopper. And I I I, um, I buy that at home, uh, uh, not home at Amazon. They send it, and it's expensive, but it, it it lasts the whole year. And it's called Deer Stopper. Deer Stopper, Deer Stopper Two, uh, 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 the Roman Two. Okay. Deer Stopper Two, and you and and you dilute it with nine times the amount with water. And you put it in the, one of these spraying things that you put under pressure, and then you spray. And I go and spray everywhere all the things that the deer like, and 
once a month. And you do it once a month. You were saying before, like about every 30 days, right? Yeah, yeah. every first of the month or so to, to, to remember, to re memorize that better, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that is, that is really the best. And I heard from somebody who do, who does in the beginning of the uh, growing season, like, like maybe February, March, when it's, things come up around the shops and so they start greening. Uh, he sprays his whole uh, surrounding uh, border mm -hmm. once, really, and then and then only the things that the deer that he really wants to protect. And, and I I go also um, um, hydrangeas, uh, azaleas, some rhododendrons, and so on and so on. I spray them. <laughs> And it's it, it's it's not it's that it doesn't sting. It 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 smells um, little little um, not uh, not unpleasant. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's yeah. And then another question is, what is the right soil for bulbs? Um, not good is clay, a real clay. So you have to put some some uh, soil amendment if if this uh, soil is really heavy and 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 it cannot um, um, drain. Mm -hmm. Good drainage is important. Most normal garden soil is good, but we have a lot of here in New, in, in New Jersey a lot of uh, clay. So. Um, that would be uh, nice to put some some uh, soil amendment like uh, mulch, uh, mulch, mulch, no, not mulch, um, uh, humus or, or something like soil. It's, about the dra it's about the drainage. That's what you really it's, need. It's the drainage. Yeah, it's the drainage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, 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 uh, uh, and when it is very heavy, you can put some sand in also at the, the drainage is, and, and don't make a little hole and put them in. Uh, loosen the soil a uh, uh, little deeper. Mm -hmm. Okay, and another question, what about the distance between planted bulbs? And I know you were saying before, different, it seems like different flowers have different... Yeah, especially irises. If you are really uh, picky and want to, want to stage a show, then you put them tw 23 feet, uh, uh, inches away from each other. They they also grow in in dense uh, uh, quarters, and um, some uh, some people make a hole and put one one daffodil and then uh, ten ten inches and another daffodil. That, that that that's not how it works. To make a clump of things close to each other and to to make a. a in a statement, not one tulip and one tulip or one tulip and uh, uh, <laughs> definitely one tulip. So you see that sometimes. That's so group little, planting for a lot group, of people. Yeah, can, yeah, exactly. A group, little little groups, and and then here another one, and and um, yeah, and you can mulch around. Not too, not too coarse, not too thick pieces, but mulch, mulching. Mm -hmm. What you get from the town, maybe. And then everybody else, if you, I mean, I'm getting lots of great questions in the chat, but if you want to unmute yourself, um, if that's easier for you, if you have a certain question you'd like to ask. I'm not the most knowledgeable, so I don't even know which way to lead the direction, but uh, Hi, I have a question. I have yeah. a question. Are there any bulbs that should not be planted together? In other words, that counteract each oh, other? Well, the, the oak tree came down and planted. Um, oh. Dominique, what did you say? Yeah, yeah my, my question. I just took down a large oak tree, and some of the roots stayed at, in the ground. It was, you know, 150 year old. It was tragic. I didn't want to take it down. Now I want to make some bulb and do some work out there to make it, because a lot of sun is coming to that location. My question is, will the roots of the oak tree 
uh, uh, how does that uh, interact with bold planting in an area that previously was a big oak tree and it still has some of the roots? They didn't really dig it up completely. That's my question. Yeah. Area. Let me answer first the other question. There are two different questions. Okay. Yeah, the, the Beatrice asked um, okay. whether there are uh, certain bulbs that don't like each other, and 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 I, I don't know anything about about that. That there are any any animosities. I, mean, uh, I know that there uh, is a knowledge about you cannot plant this kale with that carrot or something. I don't know. So. Um, um, I don't know anything of that, Beatrice. And and to your uh, question, Dominique, you. um, well, under the trees is very good drainage. So and it's dry in summer. It's good to 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 plant bulbs between the roots of a shrub or a, a tree. I wouldn't go too close. To the to the big stem. Excuse, yeah. Excuse me. No, I took down the oak tree, so the roots are like old. Oh, oh, you took them down. Old roots. It's down. It was a tragedy. I had it. was a big operation, and now I'm left with the soil, which has some of the remnants of the roots of the old oak tree. That's my question: uh, how to plant in that kind of area. So there's the mulch from 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 uh, from yeah. grounding. From grounding, yes, yeah, some, that, is, that is not good. You know the the uh, the, the compost the composting composting of of the um, of the soil of of this wood takes too much nitrogen or whatever. Uh, okay, so that's not a good idea yet. That takes a while, especially from an oak. Good answer. Okay. I'm glad I didn't venture into that. Thank you. That's yeah, you can you can put. Uh, 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 um, ground ground cover there, like. Yeah, I'll put the different things, but I won't put both. Now I see. Okay. And for, I, yeah, and further out, you can you can put, uh, for instance, this col colchicum, the the autumn crocus, that is very nice in 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 an area like that. Uh, these big. Um, I'm also using large pots, uh, just uh, on top of it, very large pots, and but that's a different. Uh, different uh, idea. She said autumn crocus. Autumn crocus would be good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Thank you. So, be good. so any, any other questions? Let me see. I have a, mm -hmm. you have a question. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, yeah. This is not only the deer who are interested in our bulbs. And lately, I have had uh, squirrels and chipmunks digging them up and oh, yeah. Yeah. sometimes eating them and sometimes only digging them up. I think, I think squirrels like to go where we loosen the soil to plant the bulb. They, they look for some place where they could, could hide their, 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 their walnuts or something. So they dig there because we, we, it's, it's easier for him. When, <laughs> to dig there where we already had loosened the soil. But these chipmunks, they, they eat the, the bulbs. And, and I don't know what, what to do. I, I put now a wire, the wire with, with a uh, one inch uh, square opening, uh, the chicken wire kind of thing mm. o over, the, over the place where I planned. And fix it with these with these um, s s stakes, and when they start coming up, then I take that the wire away. Because um, some some of the plants are the stems are bigger than the the wire, and they would cut in, into the plant, and they wouldn't grow. So I'm, I'm afraid. So I take the the wire away. You you can also um, try with with burlap, put burlap on top uh, for just for the winter, and when and when and when the, um, the plants start poking up, you you see that, and then you take that away. And yeah, that is. Um, 
a work in progress always. There was another question, how much sun do the bulbs need? So the bulbs themselves, like it's, it would just be the plants, I guess, once they start coming up. The bulbs need the sun in, in spring as much as they can. Okay. And that's, that's why um, you plant them under, under the trees that have no leaves in winter. When you plant them now, it's okay when they still have leaves. But when 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 um, the, in spring they should no evergreens. No evergreens. This is deciduous trees, so mm -hmm. that in spring the sun comes full in, and then when 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 uh, the, the 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 leaves of the little plants are wilting, and and then they want it dry and and not too hot, and and. So a little shade in, in during the summer would, would be very good. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so any other questions? Again, you'd have to unmute yourself. I have muted. Um, or in the chat, any other questions in the chat? It, it seems like, as you're saying here, everything is a, a little, it's always, you always have to, change a little bit of what you're doing and oh, learn from what you're forth and back. Yeah. Okay, good. So after planting, uh, uh, water them nicely. And, and in spring, they, they want a moist spring, but we might mostly have a moist spring. And then they need a more drier um, situations under, under the shrubs or the, or the uh, I do have one more question. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a bunch of uh, tulip bulbs. Would it be possible to, or, I mean, are the, same, the recommendations for soil the same if I were to put them in a large pot? Yeah. Okay, and do I start them, do I leave it outside as well and just cover it maybe with burlap as well and close to the house so I can have them sprout mm -hmm. like a barrel mm -hmm. pot or something like that? Yeah. Yes, and you can do something else uh, in addition. Uh, put the bulbs, uh, the, the big bulbs underneath and put small ones on top. You okay. put the, the big bulbs on the bottom, like, like uh, daffodils or tulips, and then soil, and then smaller bulbs like crocus and, and, and um, um, scylla and so on on top, and, and then you have a nice for a long time, a, a blooming uh, pot. Very nice. So, and I'm yeah. assuming if we keep it close to the house, then the animals will hopefully stay away. Yeah, and put yeah, you can put a burlap on top, yeah. a burlap on top, and and um, yeah, protect it from heavy frost when we get a really cold winter. That can. Uh, so then I could bring it into the garage, for instance, near a window or something. Like it's not not a heated garage. No, 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 no. No, no. Yeah. Yeah, if you can move it, that, that would be, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, thank um, you. Vibka, where do, where do you get your ball? Um, uh, there is one, one uh, very, very good store, and that is Rosslust on Franklin Turnpike. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's good. I know. Yeah, they have they have a good choice, and then the catalog is uh, cheaper. Uh, John John cheaper. Um. Oh, see that. Can you see okay. that? Yes, I see John, it. John cheaper. Yes. Mm -hmm. they, they, they have a very, very good choice, a very good reputation. Um, yeah. So there really is, um, um, hi, there really is like a difference in the quality of the bulbs. So like if you, you know what I mean? Like let's say Home Depot versus Roslers, you're saying? Oh, Home Depot is good too. Um, oh. There's nothing wrong with the Home Depot, but the, you have to you have to um, test the, the 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 bags or what whether it's mushy or or, or, or brownish and lo dead looking, and um, I have never had a problem with sheeper. Um, okay, good to know. Yeah. 
So what are you looking at? You're looking for a firm type of, the bulb should be yeah, firm? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, they, they should be firm, yeah. Okay. And, and mm, yeah, what else? Sometimes there's already a little, 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 like a pearl, a little beginning of, of a, a sprout. That's, that's a good sign. But it doesn't have to be, but, it, but sometimes you already see that. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Did everybody get their question in? It looks like it. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. It's good to, good to see you, Vicky. <laughs> and Dominic, yeah, nice. Thank you. <laughs> And I would, I would like to thank, I would like to thank you. We've got, this was, this was actually very, very interesting. I, I've got a lot to um, learn and, and, and discover. And I, I think we do have a little bit more time. It seems like we, we're still okay weather-wise. It hasn't quite, we, we got a little bit more time before the frost yeah. is coming. So this is a perfect time to really start thinking about which, which ones we want our garden to look like. Yeah. It is maybe a little, a little late for, for ordering uh, the, by the catalog, mm -hmm. because it, that that might take. I, I don't know. That, that, yeah, yeah. I, I would call them and ask them. But it's still good, but mm -hmm. sometimes uh, it takes too long. And then, but uh, as I said, uh, until the first heavy frost, not the little little night frost, but mm -hmm. the first high heavy frost, then you shouldn't mm -hmm. plant anymore. Okay, and, and then you will share with me, like I, I was saying before, I did record this, so we will upload it, and I will do a, a follow-up email to everybody, and if you can give me some of the resources that you said you were, we were talking about, some of the flowers you were talking about, if that you pass that along to me, I will pass that along to everybody else. Yes, I'd just like to comment that I also thought that the photographs were absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. just Thank really you. Beautiful. I assume they were mostly yours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good job. Beautiful. <laughs> Inspirational, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we have to. Uh, it makes you almost hope you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> to some extent. To some minor extent. Okay. I thank you all that you came and um, it's nice. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. And thank you everybody for attending and for spending. And thank the library also. The library is a very good program for the library. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Bye now. Bye everybody. And thank you bye. very bye. much. Bye. And thank you to the Master Gardeners of Bergen County for uh, suggesting oh, yeah. for your organization as well. They do a beautiful job in Van Swan Park. Let me tell you guys. They haven't been working in Van Swan Park for since the pandemic, you know that. Yeah. yeah. That's all, yeah. But they are some great group, let me tell you that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah.